an NFL draft scout called Oklahoma QBU. And I want to talk about what is blatantly obvious and what's not. And all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to talk about what an NFL draft scout said about Oklahoma and its quarterback position. Matt Miller goes to his Twitter account of his own accord earlier on Monday morning. Maybe he was watching film. Maybe he was having a discussion like we are on Twitter. Maybe he was just having a discussion, you know, IRL. But it still came out of his account in a tweet. Oklahoma is QBU until further notice, and it's not even up for debate. Now, I trust Matt Miller. I trust his draft evaluations. He's a Texas dude, so he really doesn't have a... Yeah, I, actually, if anybody was going to throw shade at Oklahoma, it'd be a Texas fan. But Matt Miller, who's a pro, just looks at what Oklahoma has done at quarterback in the last four or five years and has said what seems to be blatantly obvious. Quarterbacks in Oklahoma turn out to be absolutely outstanding quarterbacks, not just in college football, but going into the pros. You've seen numerous film breakdowns of why Kyler Murray is good. You've seen numerous film breakdowns of why Baker Mayfield is good. Now we're talking about Jalen Hurts as if he could be the third straight Heisman winner, maybe even the, top, the third straight number one overall draft pick in this upcoming draft for Oklahoma, and he plays quarterback at Oklahoma. Now, some folks believe this is a referendum on Lincoln Riley and it being transfer you, which is not really the shade that you think it is. I understand, hey, the argument is Lincoln Riley is not going to pick a guy out of high school and groom him into being a Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall draft pick. He's going to take a guy that somebody else recruited out of high school who flamed out or was unhappy or flat out just didn't get a scholarship offer, and he's going to turn that guy into a road beater. Now, walk that out for just a second. What you're basically saying is Cliff Kingsbury, who was given the head coaching job in part because he coached Patrick Mahomes and he also coached Baker Mayfield and also has an affinity for the air raid like we all do, is a head coach. You're also saying that Kevin Sumlin, who had Kyle Allen and Kyler Murray at his disposal, along with Kenny Hill for a time, did absolutely nothing with those guys. And anybody who watched Kyler Murray coming out of high school would tell you what I'm going to tell you right now. He's the best high school quarterback anybody's seen in history. Full stop. He is the best Texas football player of all time coming out of high school. 43-0. and 0. Allen High School, the top level of high school football in Texas. And I'm actually pretty fond of saying there is no better high school football in the country than there is in the state of Texas. And five foot ten and a half or an eighth, five foot ten and an eighth, Kyler Murray is its best player. Okay? Now with Jalen Hurts, we're going to find out is Dan Enos the kind of quarterback coach that he seemed to be at Alabama. And I don't necessarily think that's going to be a fair comparison because Enos played the better quarterback at Alabama when Tua Tagovailoa showed up, right? So the second half of the national championship game, Tua Tagovailoa not only wins the national championship for Alabama, but he puts Jalen Hurts on the bench. For many people, one of the best starting quarterbacks perhaps in the last 10 years. Guy who's been 26-2 and as a starter and was still needed to come off the bench in the SEC championship game to beat a very, very good Georgia football team. And now Jalen Hurts is coming to Oklahoma, where he expects to become a better passer, to remain the same leader, to remain the, the same old soul, and improve his draft stock because Lincoln Riley has shown time and time again, he doing him is better than you doing you. And that's what I think we're really talking about. We're talking about Lincoln Riley's effect on Oklahoma, particularly at quarterback. Now, I'm fond of also saying I got a really hard time if I'm a parent of a high school football quarterback if Lincoln Riley offers him and going, 
is that guy going to actually play? Is my kid going to play for Lincoln Riley? Because Austin Kendall, you would say, sat on the bench like he was supposed to, backed up Baker Mayfield, backed up Kyler Murray. I thought it was going to be his time. No, Jalen Hurst became available. Austin Kendall decided to transfer. It got a little nasty there at the end of it. But Austin Kendall, for all intents and purposes, is going to start at West Virginia. Jalen Hurts is going to start at OU. Now, Tanner Mordecai has got to be looking around and going, am I really going to get an opportunity to play here after Jalen Hurts? Because Spencer Rattler is moving on to campus in June. And he's a five-star quarterback. The only five-star quarterback in the 2019 class. And anybody who's seen Spencer Rattler play any lick of football knows my man can absolutely spin it. And he would be the betting favorite to win the starting job in 2020, even as Tanner Mordecai would have two seasons in Lincoln Riley's system at Oklahoma because he's just the better talent. And Lincoln Riley has not hidden. He's going to play the most talented quarterback that he has. See Austin Kittle versus Kyler Murray in 2018. Now, what this really gets interesting for me is he doesn't have a 2020 quarterback committed to this class. In an age where some folks are taking more than one quarterback in a class, either the guy that he wanted, Bryce Young, remains committed to USC, and there's nobody else out there that he really wants to go get, except all those guys are committed, right? So I am really want to see how this, how this cycle ends for quarterback. Because we're heading into the summer without even knowing who is at the top of the pecking order for Lincoln Riley on his target list. I still think it's Bryce Young, right? For all reasons that we've talked about in previous segments on this show. But what if there's just not a guy out there that he decides that he wants? Is that such a bad thing? No, because there's going to become a, or there's going, yes, there's going to come a quarterback who will be available in the transport portal at some point in time over the next six, seven, eight, 12 months. Look at Matthew Baldwin at Ohio State. Look at Justin Fields at Georgia. You can keep looking around. Quarterbacks are going to come out and they're going to be available in the age of college football free agency. You don't actually have to recruit a quarterback. You can go wait for one to find himself in a bad situation that you know has the goods on film to play. Go bring that guy in. Make him your quarterback. And that's what Lincoln Riley has called this. He's called it a waiver wire of sorts. And I don't fault him for that. Because if that's the way that I could do it, that's the way that I do it. You don't necessarily argue about how you get him onto campus. As long as it's within the purview of the rules, go get your kid and go let him play. And now we're getting to see the fallout of it. And the fallout of it is one of the reasons why I love what I do. Because I love the stories that go along with this stuff. Because there were people that swore up and down in January and Matthew Baldwin was going to give Justin Fields every bit he wanted. And then after spring game came, he said, nah, you know what? I'm going to go to TCU where they got five other quarterbacks. But you know what? I think I can beat every last one of them. And he probably can. He probably will. That's why I'm going to be interested to see if Jalen Jones comes out of this okay at Florida. And, the, and honestly, there's no way he can because this is going to be attached to him. He's always going to have this sexual misconduct stigma attached to him, whether it's true or not. If it's true, get him out of college football. If it's not, he's still going to have to contend with that. In the same way that Joe Mixon had to contend with punching a woman in the face at Picklemans before he even played a down of football. It's just a thing that's going to have to happen. But wait for all those things to fall out, see where the pieces land, and see what kind of puzzle Lincoln Riley puts together because what we know to be true, what we know the bottom line is, Oklahoma is QBU and is QBU until further notice. All right, that's it for me. Doses.